Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. So the last place we left off, uh, Wallace had just found that a little diary in his drawer, and he had taken it up to the service desk, and apparently none of the staff can tell him who that diary belonged to. Or even, yeah, it's, it's just weak, unusual. They, they won't even take the diary. They're just telling him to keep it. So... A little bit of a mystery we've uncovered here. Let's see how deep it goes, shall we? But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. Alarm chain, you are up. And let's get right into it. <clears throat> I suddenly feel very uncomfortable. Like I'm being watched through the security cameras. Sorry to bother you, then. Thank you for your help. My mutter is barely audible as I hurry to grab the journal and rush to the elevator. Have a good night, sir. I don't look back. An itching sensation runs up my back as I push my way into my room. A heavy, uncomfortable feeling crawls up my neck, causing the fur to stand on end. I chuck the diary onto the desk and fall haphazardly onto my bed. It's best to just ignore it for now. The only problem is underneath me is a pile of pants. The uncomfortable lump pressing into my stomach. After I found the diary, I completely forgot to put them away. Turning my head to the right, I can see the dislodged drawer leaning against the far nightstand. I'll deal with that later, too. Right now, I just need a moment to mellow out. Just a moment. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm standing on a beach. The water looks black under the night sky. The waves crash in front of me as I sit on a rocky ledge. I can feel my eyes burn as if I had stared into the sun for hours. The only companion with me on this deserted beach is the sound of the thunderous roaring in front of me. There's a part of me that wants to join in its uproar. There's a scream so loud the heavens will quiver. But I can't bring myself to do anything. All I can do is stare down at the phone in my hand, watching my reflection on the empty screen, as if waiting for something. But I can't remember what I'm waiting for. It feels like I've been sitting here for hours. Suddenly my phone lights up and I see a little message pop up. As the alert chimes from my phone, I feel myself lurching upwards. <laughs> the relatively quiet alert echoes loudly, ripping apart the peaceful silence as I'm jolted awake. My eyes burn as I try to figure out what's going on. Between my, head, between my head pounding and bile in my throat, it takes me nearly a minute to compose myself. A loud groan croaks from my throat as I fumble about, trying to locate my phone. What time is it? My voice sounds hoarse, like I haven't drank anything in years. It's like my entire mouth is filled with cotton. Locating my phone, it shows that I've only slept for an hour and a half. No wonder I'm feeling awful. Naps always make me feel like trash. The notifications I've gotten are two emails. The first is just the promised contact information of the rest of my media group, while the other is from a name I barely recognize. Cinder. Lily Rose. Subject. Meet up. I consider just going back to sleep and reading it later, but the silhouette of the drawer on the other bed reminds me that I still had to put my pants away. Sitting up, I hear little clicks as I stretch my back. A bad sleeping posture makes this a common occurrence, but the sound never fails to make my skin crawl. Blinking away the last of the sleep from my eyes, I open up the email. The brightness, may the brightness makes reading it with bloom. The brightness makes reading it with my blurry eyes difficult. Hey, my name is Lily. I'm in the same media class as you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know that I want to do a little get-together tomorrow. So we can do some introductions and maybe get started on our project a little bit. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? I was thinking we could meet up at school library near Edmund Hall at around lunch. We can hang the we can hang then, maybe get some food, you know. I'm sending this to all you so that if so that if it conflicts with any of your schedules, let me know and I'll change the time. Tell me tonight! We don't, want it to, we don't want to do it on such short notice. Love, Lily. It takes me a moment to remember the name. Right, Lily Rose. She's in my group. Meeting her and the others is probably a good idea. I know where Edmund Hall is. Thankfully, I have my biology class there. Quickly, quickly checking my schedule on my phone. I only have one class on Tuesday. It's my second biology class of the week in Edmund Hall at 10 a.m. It'll be a tight fit, but the lecture finishes at 11, at 11.45, so it should be fine. With that out of the way, the only thing left to deal with is putting the rest of my luggage away. Hoisting myself off the bed, I get to work organizing my pants and the rest of my bag, which only has toiletries remaining. I've never been partial to cleaning my to, I've never been partial to cleaning, but reorganizing my room has always been a good way for me to calm down. That's such good music. Now that everything's done, I realize how empty this room is. I'm not used to having many I'm not used to having many friends, but without my parents in the house as well, it feels like it's missing something. 
It's small, but a twinge of sadness starts to flow through me. My phone startles me out of my melancholy. I'm expecting it to be Lily again, but telling me someone couldn't make it, but I see a text message from someone else instead. It's from Oscar. Hey, just saw the email. Guess we'll be meeting up a bit earlier than expected. Looks like you'll be making more friends in no time. Looks like his enthusiasm never ends from the never ends, and from the way it's making me smile, it's working on me too. I still don't think it's going to be as much of a bonding experience as you think it'll be. Hm, <laughs> that's a lot of big words for a meet and eat. Still, can't wait to catch you there. Before I can even respond, he sends another message. I'm gonna pass out. Catch you tomorrow, little guy. Catch you tomorrow. I tried to sound a bit more casual, but I think I just came off as awkward. Not much for text slang. I was almost tempted to bring up the comment on my height, but he does tower over me. Thinking about just how large Oscar is has my mind spinning in many different ways. I'd better distract myself and fast. More importantly, his mention of a meat meat has my stomach considering its options. A Chinese place down the road should still be open. I'll get something from there tonight. I don't have any groceries to cook anything in the shared kitchen anyway. When I return, take out food in hand, my eyes immediately fall onto the diary. It's still exactly where I left it, tossed haphazardly onto the deck at the end of my bed. I can't exactly return it, so I guess it couldn't hurt to read it. Plus, I might be able to figure out who the diary belongs to. I take a seat on the barely cushioned chair, trying to ignore the guilt in my chest. At least they have a gap in the back of for tails. Making sure the diary isn't in the splash range, I eat some of the sweet and sour chicken. I'd be horrified if I returned to a diary covered in food stains. Satisfied, I open up the diary and find a frustrating surprise. On the inside of the cover, written in a large font. Property of Helena Lawson. Please call 202-555-0106 to return. I feel like I'm staring at it for an eternity before it finally registers. Seriously? Embarrassment and a little anger rise in my chest as I feel extremely stupid for trying to pry information out of the receptionist instead of just checking inside the diary. It's only 8.21 p.m. Surely they wouldn't be asleep yet. Trying to ignore the apprehensive feeling whispering in my ear, I dial the number. Do I just... tell her I was snooping through her diary? Surely she'll understand if it's to return it. Right? But instead of any of the options I'm expecting, a second surprise awaits me. Sorry, but the phone you've called is no longer active. If this is your number, please call customer... I cut the pre-recorded message off before releasing a large sigh, though it might as well have been a groan. I toss my phone onto my bed, close the book, and decide to deal with it tomorrow. Quickly grabbing my laptop, I started moving and grabbed my food, ready to settle in for the night. Rushing out of Edmund Hall, I rushed through the co busy crowds of students leaving their classes. Wow, that was a really jarring, just jarring cut there. <laughs> Alright, let's roll with it. Biology took a little bit longer to finish than expected. It's only five minutes past our meetup time, but it leaves a bad impression if I'm late to the first meeting. Even with running the rest of the way, it takes a couple of minutes to reach the library and I'm covered in sweat. I don't even want to know what I smell like. Curse my muscle heritage. God, I'm out of shape. Maybe I should have gone with Oscar last night. The library is a lot bigger than I expected, and it's three stories and students are flowing constantly in and out of the building. It takes me a while to realize that the study area is on the next floor. Hmm. Upon reaching the second floor, I'm overwhelmed by just how many students there are. And they're all human. They're all human! There's got to be at least 20 tables and almost all of them are occupied. God, it looks more like a church. I'm worried I might not find any group in this crowd, but... I'm sorry. I'm worried I might not find my group in this crowd, but thankfully, I can see an otter waving, waving irreverently. It would be embarrassing if he didn't pull off his confidence so well. I'm lucky I'm already acquainted with Oscar. Having to find a group of people I don't know would be much harder. Walking close to the table, I'm surprised by the number of people I recognize. Oh my god. Obviously, there's Oscar with his giant smile, even bigger than normal. He looks exceptionally excited about something. I'm not sure if it's from being in a group or from me arriving. The thought of the latter does make my ears burn. He's wearing a different outfit this time. Instead of his lax button-up shirt, he's now wearing some green tank top. Some, he's now wearing a sea green tank top covered in different shapes and colors. It's definitely a more distinct look than his previous shirt. I didn't realize how muscular his arms were. I guess that makes sense considering how excited he was to swim. I knew he was fit. I just didn't know he. I just didn't know he was this level of jock. Catching myself gawking, I quickly make my way towards the free spot next to the possum. My attention is still caught on Oscar as he moves. Stretching his arms above his head, he pushes his chair away from the table and lifts himself off the seat with the strength of his tail. 
As he slides back down the back of as he slides back down the back of the chair, however, the back of his tank top snags on top of the backrest, causing it to lift up slowly. Oh damn! Damn boy, you got them muscles. Oh! His slow descent from his slow descent down from his stretch progressively reveals more of his stomach and all of his chiseled body. It feels almost dirty to stare, but I can't take my eyes away. It doesn't take me long to realize that he's showing himself off on purpose. No one would lower themselves this slowly. Is he showing off for me? He waited for me to show up before trying this, but there's no way. Why would someone like him be like into someone like me? Thankfully, his eyes are closed the entire duration of his sinking show. If he could see the way I was staring, I think I'd die of embarrassment. By the time he's properly sitting on the seat, most of his abdominals have been revealed. I've never seen someone who was this defined before. Even the people on my high school's, high school's football team weren't this toned. Not even close. Then his eyes open and he's staring directly at me. There's a mixture of sensuality and confidence in them, like he expects to catch people staring. But as soon as our eyes meet, his entire demeanor changes. His eyes brighten up, shivering like the sea in broad daylight, and his smile widens to an even larger degree. There's hunger and excitement in his eyes now. Yep, he's definitely flirting with me. Even I'm not that dense. I shook away, but I can't stop staring into his eyes. Like a riptide, dragging me along with its current. You're filled with a lot of things, but the most obvious thing that this is about this is how his attention is solely on me. He's extremely handsome and a complete jock. I don't really understand why he's so focused on me. I know I haven't met him before, but it doesn't seem like he knew me either. Did I leave, a, did I leave that good of a first impression? I'm pretty sure I just acted like a complete coward at the auditorium. His stomach moves, drawing my eyes toward them. I can't tell if he's just breathing deeply or trying to get my attention towards his exposed area. I notice something else and I immediately push my eyes back up to his face. A look of mischief covers his features. He's... Not wearing any underwear. I didn't see anything specific, but with how the top of his loose shorts sag forwards, it gave me a clear view of nothing underneath. Oscar. A sharp warning voice behind me jolts me out of my mesmerized state. I remember exactly where I am. The muscular otter only gives a chuckle as a response and starts to adjust his shirt while I swiftly turn my attention back to the rest of the table. The only significant reaction is the Shiba Inu trying to hide her giggling. It's not malicious, but it causes my ears to flush and change my focus to the other members of the group. Across from me is the fox I sat next to yesterday, seemingly unaware of what had just happened in front of him. His attention is squarely focused on his phone, but his eyes flick to me for a moment before returning to his phone. I think he... I think he not noticed, but... I think he... I think he noticed... Okay. I think he noticed, but just doesn't care. It helps with the blood I can feel rushing to my face, but my heart my heart's left a little sore by his, by his total lack of interest. He's still looking very downbeat, but not as uncomfortable as yesterday. It doesn't look like he's about to start clawing the table, at least. The outfit he's wearing is similar to yesterday, too, minus the vest. A simple dress shirt and tie. His fur looks considerably cleaner now, and his eyes aren't matted. His auburn eyes stand out on his dark fur. I guess he was just having a bad day? Ah, there you go. It was a bad boy. The most unexpected member of our little group is the possum leaning back on his chair. He must have been the one who got Oscar to stop. He's still clad in that same leather jacket. He's still leaning back on his chair, allowing me to see his ripped jeans. I wonder if they're genuinely ripped or just a stylistic choice. I'm honestly scared to ask. He's looking much more surprised than the others, though there's some concern mixed into his eyes. <laughs> Jesus, kid, you look like shit. And you look like... And you look like you crawled out of a dumpster from a trailer park. So I don't think you have room to judge. The possum's expression turns to one of confusion at the Volpine's remark. His attention immediately diverts over to him. A little bit of sadness is poking through the hard exterior, but mostly just confusion at the sudden attack. By the way, his ears are lowered. By the way... Okay, that... Hmm, I don't think there should be a comma there. By the way his ears are lowered, I think that comment stung. Hmm. Anyway... Oh, she's adorable. An unfamiliar woman's voice catches my attention, and I turn to who I can only assume is Lily, standing in front of her chair with her hands clasped in front of her chest. Ah, she's doing her best out of impersonation. I had completely forgotten she was here. The others are just are such eccentric characters, they all drag my attention to them. She's a small canine, definitely shorter than me, which is pretty rare. Most people tend to be smaller than me. 
Her features are soft and comforting, a stark contrast to our fellow vulpine and marsupial members. She's wearing a light yellow cardigan. It looks hand-knit and very comfortable. It's a nice contrast to her rather dark fur color. Underneath, she's wearing a cute pink dress that only goes halfway down her thigh. I can see the lighter fur color of her inner thighs, causing me to look back up to her face. My ears burning with embarrassment. She's got a smile on her face. Hers feels very maternal and subdued, unlike the otter's boisterous giant grin. Wallace, please take a seat. She's gesturing to the seat across from her. Seriously, please, there's been a fair bit of bickering, and I want to start so we can all introduce ourselves. Hopefully things mellow out. For a split second, I think she's kidding, but despite her genuine smile, there's a traces of fatigue scattered across her features. Not enough for me to worry, but enough to see it's a little tiring. I quickly take my seat, not wanting to hold her up, and before anyone else can say anything, Lily continues. So, as you can probably guess, I am Lily. Lily Rose. Yes, it's a weird name. No, I'm not from a family of florists. She gives a light chuckle at her own joke. It's a warm laugh that causes my lips to twist into a grin. It's so contagious. We've already introduced ourselves while we were waiting, so I'll just introduce you to them now. She gestures over to her right, point towards the out-of-place to, out marsupial. Ah, I don't know what's going on in my mouth today. This is Ash. A sudden glare in her direction forces her to cut herself off, though she brushes it off with a laugh pretty fast. I mean, this is Lay Scott. He's rather quiet from what I can tell. Hmm, interesting. Is this a trans character? Ran into, we ran into each other at yesterday's lecture. <laughs> Almost literally, I might add. Lily is looking at us with an inquisitive expression. Obviously curious. Lay, on the other hand, has his eyes closed, and he's shaking his head, but I can see the corners of his mouth curving up just a little bit. Yeah, I uh, kind of almost uh, tripped over and he caught me. He even saved my laptop. Lift up my laptop bag for emphasis, trying to ignore the unimpressed looks I know I'm getting. It would have smashed everywhere if it wasn't for him. Also, it wouldn't have smashed if you, were look if you had looked where you were going. All eyes shift towards the vulpin and, and he shuffles uncomfortably in his seat. He sneers, but it's not directed at us, his attention firmly on the table. <sighs> Sorry. Leia, who had been signed... Th who has been silent this whole conversation, finally speeds up. Lay, that's his name, Lay. Hmm, are you doing all right, kid? Not hurting anywhere. You still had a rather hard thump against me. I'm fine. It's not like I smacked into the ground. You really saved me there. I'm still pretty hard. Had to check. Hmm, for a second, I think he's trying to show off or keep up some kind of badass facade, but his face looks serious. I can't tell if that makes me worried or curious. Can I check? The smooth, familiar voice of the otter from yesterday asks next to me, and I nearly let out a sigh. He's been flirty with me so far, but this is rather sh but this is rather shame. Less. Expecting a teasing or lecherous expression on the otter, I am le left a gap, a gape, and left a gap. <laughs> I'm left a gap by the genuine curiosity across his face. He's already leaning across the table, his excitement palpable. There doesn't seem to be any of that playful flirtiness in his body language until he notices me examining him, and his eyes flick over to me and give me a wink. Doesn't seem like he's too interested in the other guys. I'm not sure if that makes me happy or embarrassed. Being flirted with is not something I'm used to. Is this even flirting, or is he playing with me? What he was doing before was pretty obvious. Especially that stun at the table. There's no real explaining that one away. Okay, okay, boys. We're getting a little off topic. Even if watching you guys is fun. Now Lily's wearing an even larger smile than before. It doesn't rival the otters, but she looks happier now that we're getting along better. Well... The next, the next guy to you is... The next guy to you is... We've met. Bumped into this guy after class. He ran, almost ran right into me, too. You make it sound like an accident. You waited outside for me. Hm, you were pretty out of it when I found you by the doors. Nothing wrong with the checking up on you, is there? Well, no, I guess there isn't. Thanks for looking out for me. I'm not going to bring up how I almost... I'm almost certain he's been flirting with me constantly since we met. I think he genuinely wants to be friends. Not just with me, but with everyone. He's just especially enamored with me for some reason. Nah. Don't think of any don't think anything of it, man. No need to take it so seriously. His outgoing personality is really not something I'm used to dealing with so often, especially when it's directed towards me. There's something captivating about him. He's so bursting with charisma, it's hard not to smile along with him. Though you should probably take me up on the offer to swim next time. Might help build up your stamina. Is is that a double entendre? I honestly can't tell with him. Ah, he's messing with my head! Hmm. 
Careful, you're gonna go, you're gonna overheat him. My eyes snap over to Lay, and I'm suddenly very aware of how hot my ears are. The possum is easily able to see exactly what the otter is what the otter was doing. I'm fine, just a bit embarrassed. Glancing up at Oscar, he's looking rather proud of himself. Once again, I'm left in a confusing spot of if his teasing is supposed to be genuine flirting or just playful ribbing. You'd like a tomato. I can even see your blush through your fur. I'm not used to the attention, okay? People don't really tend to approach me often or are that affectionate in public. If you can call that affection. I wish people would annoy me less. Are you always this much of a downer? You sound like someone just killed your pet. Sorry, not all of us have the brains of a peanut and can be satisfied with flashing lights. Ah, oh, God. Ah, all these characters are very interesting. I want to know why the fox is such an ass, though. He's like, I hate everything. Everything sucks. Grrr. Walls I've put up to keep myself safe from others. <laughs> But anyway, guys, this has been another episode of Violet Memoir. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!